What's up everyone? My name is Kristen Harris and we're here for another Sheen Talk Live. I'm here today with our guest, Alan Obi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. He is the creator and the founder of We Need to Talk. So, I know a little bit about We Need to Talk from previous years, but it started on a college campus, huh? It did. Okay. It did. So fill us in on the journey and how you got to where you are now. Yeah, so we started We Need to Talk in 2013 at Landon University. Mm -hmm. um, it was an offshoot of the NAACP. So yeah. it was it was an NAACP event, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the goal, the initial goal was to kind of mend the divides between races, between sexes, between, you know, different subgroups of people. Mm -hmm. So we started doing discussions. Um, it got pretty big. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we grew it and we expanded to different schools. I graduated. It didn't work the same way after that. So yeah. I had to, you know, reformat it into what it is today. So, okay. So what, during your college years, what would you say one of the biggest topics that you covered was? So I, I look at big in two ways, right? Okay. So I look at it from a quality standpoint and from yeah. a quantity standpoint. Okay, so, so let's do both. Some, some of the most quality conversations, mm -hmm. most people didn't show up to. So uh, the room was yeah. full of 30, 40 people, yeah. but it was a very impactful, it was a, it was a very hard hitting conversation. Yeah. So yeah, so um, most of the conversations about the male and female dynamic mm -hmm. got the, you know, yeah. the, the biggest turnout. And I, and I think that's because love and companionship is such an important part of being human. Yeah. So uh, those did the best. So, um, in these conversations, given that, you know, your audience at that time was between what, 19 and like 24, Yeah. would you say that the content at that time was digestible for that audience? Mm, I, I think it's less an audience thing and yeah. I think it's more a generational thing. Yeah. Definitely. Because one of the reasons we transitioned away from schools was mm -hmm. Gen Z, even though, you know, later on they were in that same age bracket, mm -hmm. they didn't care as much. Yeah. Definitely. You know, they weren't as interested in dialogue. They weren't as interested in these uh in these topics. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at that time, you know, we were still millennials. So yeah. like, millennials are at this cusp of mm -hmm. we're very tech heavy, but we're also very personal interpersonal right okay so you graduated and then you transitioned into a new journey for we need to talk so yeah. what is that so the new journey it started literally in November mm -hmm. right so um, I, I'd been on YouTube since 2015 mm -hmm. but you know YouTube is incredibly difficult like yeah. I had 140 subscribers yeah as we say here today, I think I have 2,700 oh, nice. between November and today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the new journey is just really condensing the black, fem black male, black female conversation mm -hmm. into a format that centers either the black man or the black woman. Because ultimately, um, you know, coming from NAACP, uh, just evolving as a person, that's always been the conversation that's been the most like pivotal. Yeah. For me and you know for our community. So give me a little sneak peek. Tell me <laughs> about some of the conversations you've had specifically when it comes to black women. So um <laughs> so the w the way that we created this format is we had black men submit questions. Oh, for black women. Goodness gracious. All right. We had black women submit questions mm -hmm. for black men. Okay. Some of the questions that black men are submitting for black women, mm -hmm. you know, deal with our current culture. And our current culture is one of which you can't tell me nothing. Yeah, facts. You know, yeah. and, and, you know, you hear guys talk about, you know, women don't want to submit. Yeah. Uh, women are tough to deal with. Mm -hmm. Women are belligerent. They, they have big egos. Yeah. So a lot of the conversations are structured to break that down and to like investigate that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of where we are. But mm -hmm. depending on the conversation, depending on um, you know where we're going with the conversation, it kind of adapts, right? Yeah. So one of the questions that comes to mind um, that we ask pretty much every single woman we interview is, "Why are you so?" 
or, or why are you in such a rush to get married? Ah, that's a good one. And okay. one of the best answers we've gotten so far is, mm -hmm. I was in, in a rush for the validation. I didn't actually know how to be a wife. I haven't actually thought about post-wedding life. That's really interesting that you say that because that's literally like my life. I have been with somebody for five years and it kind of feels like at what point are we going to get married? Because I'm sitting here, I live with you, I give you the sex, I give you the sometimes cooking and cleaning aspect and we're sitting here still. But my next question for you is do you feel like women specifically black women are looking for that validation due to past I don't want to say traumas past relationships or lack thereof so so it's two things right yeah. <clears throat> the first thing what what I think is the most pressing thing is you know biology yeah you're like, you know, I want to have kids. My clock is ticking. You know, my clock is ticking once yeah. I hit 30, 35, I'm a high-risk pregnancy, so I have to yeah. do this now, and I don't want to do it outside of the institution of marriage, mm -hmm. right? And I'm a geriatric. Exactly. Yeah. And then there, there are a lot of risks, you know, chromosomal issues with the baby. There are a lot exactly. of risks to that. Yeah. But I think the other thing, too, is mm -hmm. a lot of women have grown up on fairy tales, have grown yes. up on Hollywood, yes. and also have grown up devoid of real world examples of companionship exactly and what exactly. hollywood tells you is that you find your boaz and they complete you yeah so in order for you to get to the next level whether in society or in yourself you have to find somebody else yeah and unfortunately women have this talent mm -hmm. right What's they have the talent? a talent of being able to place any man's face on the silhouette of their dream guy yes I am I'm so guilty of that. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. If you talk to me right, look nice, then that's what it was for me too. Yeah. So there's um there's a there's a book by a guy named James Sexton. Yeah. James Sexton is a twenty year divorce lawyer. Oh. Okay. So he wrote a book called If You're in My Office, It's Already Too Late. Mm. And the reason he wrote the book was he found that in 20 years of his you know divorce attorney experience maybe three people mm -hmm. started the process and ended it yeah mm -hmm. but most of the time when they start the process they see it all the way through yeah and one of the analogies he brought up they really stuck with me and you know hopefully i can leave this with y'all mm -hmm. um if i asked you or if i told you that you have all the money in the world yeah and you can buy any car you want yeah what kind of car would you buy um Probably like a high end mm -hmm. something. Exactly. Well, I don't know if it would be high end because you know Honda's pretty good too. Yeah. Well, so you're anything smart. that's dependable. You're smart. Yeah, I don't really care about the label part, but when I say high end, I mean like something that's suited right, well right. for longevity. Well, you're smart. Most people yeah. are not. Most people are gonna say Lamborghini, Ferrari. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, if he, if I told you that that's the only car you can have for the rest of your life. Yeah. Now you have to be more practical. Do yeah. I want to have kids? I can't put a car seat in a Ferrari. Exactly. Do I want to get old? When my knees go bad, can I top in and exactly. out of that low car, right? Yeah. So then you have to be more practical because what works for you at 20 might not work for you at 40, might exactly. not work for you at 60. Mm -hmm. And his point was, people give more thought into the car they're gonna buy than the person yeah. they're that they marry. In. Yeah. I mean, that's true. We talk about that all the time here because, you know, there's a difference between having a life partner and having a husband. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference when you're outgrowing each other, do you have that conversation? Mm -hmm. Because in my current relationship, I say, hey, if you're gonna cheat on me, at least tell me. Mm -hmm. And all the guys yeah. here are like, you can't handle that. But I'm like, not work. is it not gonna work? I mean, you don't, but you know, I'm just saying because I do realize that like, we go through different phases. But typically when women cheat, it's premeditated. So you expect that from us. I can tell you if it's yeah. premeditated, but for men, it's usually not, we're not that smart. It's like it's, yeah. she had a fat ass or yeah. it was just something yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, so. Well, you just never know. But that's interesting that you bring up that point. So in the future, moving forward, where do you see We Need to Talk going and what are some of your strategies that you're using 
in order to create the environment that you hope to see continue? So my biggest goal when we need to talk, it's never been one of, I want to make a bunch of money or I want to be famous or I want it to be famous. It's more so been one of, I want to equip people with the tools and the audacity to have substantive conversation. Ooh, right? yeah, that's good. Um, so one of our goals is we're trying to figure out a way to consolidate the we need to talk experience to a card game. I so a card that. game that yeah. you can play at house parties, a card yes. game that you could play, you know, on dates, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and then um, we just want to keep growing the conversation and encouraging other people. Like I, I want when somebody watches our videos, yeah. they say, hey, babe, what do you, you think about what he said? What do you think right. about what she said? What do you think about that topic? Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, one of the reasons most relationships don't work is because yeah. there's there's not a continued investment into you learning the person. Right. Because Kristen at 20 is yep. different from Kristen at 30, will be different. So I have to be committed to constantly getting to know and falling in love with you over and over yeah. again. But that only happens through intimacy conversation. Yeah. Mm. That's something good too, because people also think that intimacy is just about sex. So it's neat that you're saying. Sex is just another form of communication. Yeah, that's true. So how can we find you? How can we know what's going on next for you? Yeah, so everything right now is um, we need to talk. That's one word. Um, it's YouTube. Okay. Um, Instagram, Facebook, like the social media apps, it's uh, WNT Talk. Okay. Yep. Instagram, TikTok. Right? Okay. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. I'm trying to grow. All righty. Well, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us for another Sheen Talk. My name is Kristen, and again, we were here with Alan. Don't forget to buy your copy of Sheen Magazine at Walmart, Walgreens, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and of course, online at SheenMagazine.com. Thank you.